One of the greatest mistakes that we make as keyboard players is wanting to learn everything at the same time. I'm just going to play Great Is Your Mercy in the key of F sharp and I'll explain the mistake that we always make. Okay, let's do it. What I would suggest, don't learn everything. Learn a movement. So I'll give you an example. So this first movement. That's it. So for today, that's it. You can just learn this. So the first thing is to learn the movement. Don't learn the whole song, right? Then the second thing is to analyze so that you understand where we're coming from. So the question you should ask yourself is, okay, why did he play this? Why did he play this movement? And where is this movement going? And if you analyze, if you take your time to analyze, you will now find out that, okay, he played this movement because he was going to the two. This is D sharp major. Left hand, this is uh, F, G sharp. Right hand, that's B, F and G sharp. I believe this should be G diminished seven. So that's G, A sharp, then C sharp, E and A sharp. So you go to the two, which is G sharp. Uh, let's turn down the one pad, which is, sorry, to the two, G sharp, D sharp and F sharp. Then you just play the melody, which is C sharp and A sharp. Then you play B, D sharp and B, right? That's the movement. So you have analyzed the movement. Okay, Trigger played this because he's going to the two. So that means you can use these passing chords when you're going to the two, right? Let's take another song. Okay, withholding nothing. I've used the same movement on another song going to the two. So I surrender all. The other thing is making the movement your own. So how do you do that? You just change certain parts of the movement. So remember we're starting from uh, D sharp, then F minor flat five, then G diminished seven, right? What if we do it vice versa. What do I mean by that? Simple. We, we have just, we just did vice versa. That's it. Right? But again, if you want to follow the melody, now what you have to do, you have to adjust a little bit. So now you're making it your own, right? So instead of... So remember, the song goes like, Great is your mercy. So instead of starting with this, you can just start with the, the D sharp major, but you play your, your sharp one on your left hand. So. So it actually makes a difference. So the change now is the left hand. So. We go to the F minor, flat five. Then we play the, uh, the sixth left hand, then C sharp, E, and A sharp. So, great is your mercy. So the first one was, great is your mercy. 
This one is going the opposite. So especially if you're playing with a bassist, you have to tell your bassist to change the notes on the left hand, right? The other thing that you can do also is Guys, guys, if you are finding this video valuable, I would really appreciate if you just like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and it also helps to push the video to more people like you. All right, so the third one. So now we started from the six, six. So the right hand is not changing, by the way. Six four and three then we go to the two but as a keyboard player you can't play like with one note like this because you're not a bassist right so you can do this yeah so the first chord the d sharp major doesn't change then this is b f and g sharp right hand this is b f and g sharp Oh, it's the same thing. <laughs> B, F, and G sharp, both hands. So, then, left hand, that's A sharp and G. Right hand, that's C sharp, E, and A sharp. You see? So, three ways. Now, we have three ways of playing the same thing, but it's sounding different. We are maintaining the melody. The first one... The second one, then the third one, you see, so this is how you get creative. And if you want to go crazy, maybe you can try something like, D sharp, A sharp. F and G, like this. If you can't stretch, you can use the pedal. So, great is. So, we're playing the same uh, second chord. That's uh, B, F, and G sharp. Then B, F, and G sharp again. So, then, bra. So, when we go to this chord, we play D sharp here. Then, our left hand, let's start with the left hand. All right, so D sharp, then you play G and A sharp. Then right hand you play C sharp, E and A sharp. So, I know I was in clean, so. That's how you get creative. You analyze a movement just part of the song or part of the tutorial, you make it your own. So when you analyze, you understand, okay, so these are the chords. Like, how can I play around the chords to make them my own? Because at the end of the day, you have to sound unique, remember? So you learn from people, then you just make it your own. Same movement. So which is why I don't encourage you to learn like 75 movements in the song because you won't have time to analyze. That's the thing. So after this, if you, you've learned this movement, then you can move on to, right? This one. You can now learn like, oh, okay, why? Why did he play this chord? Like why? You analyze this movement as well. You make it your own. You find a way of, you know, changing the chords, like playing different inversions. If you want to put like a riff there, that's how you sound unique. That's it. So that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Like the video. And also just comment below and let me know what you think about this idea. I'll see you guys on the next one.